How you doing? All good, all good. Tired. Look, let me start by saying congrats, for real. Thank you so um, much. Uh, I'm a really big fan of the way you move your camera. Uh, Thank you. During, like, I, I like the way you have your shots set up and the way the camera moves. How much are you figuring that? How much are you storyboarding? How much are you figuring that in the moment while you're standing there on set? I, I don't storyboard. I rarely do. I mean, if I do, it's more for the technical departments to know what we might see, or, you know, what direction the camera's going to be pointing. But, uh, but I do like to, to keep it fresh and keep it, um, you know, spontaneous, I think. And every day, like, some, some of the best stuff comes up on the day. I mean, one of my favorite shots in the movie, the opening shot of the actual movie after the title credits, that, you know, present this guy talking to his wife and, and it seems like just a normal evening and then we, we learn a bit more about it. It's, it's one of the things that we just, Pedro, my DP and myself, we, which I work with on Don't Breathe as well, we just on the fly get, try, trying to figure it out and we find an idea. And, and I think that's because you never know how the place is going to look on the day. So you have to, if you have made any decisions, too many decisions before, then you're locking yourself down to something that might not be great. Uh, what was it about this project that said, I, uh, this is my project after Don't Breathe? Well, I, I think it had, for, for a movie that I knew was going to have a bigger canvas, right? Um, it felt like it was the tone was kind of in the world of the movies that I've been making. Now, this is, obviously, there's an evolution there, and, and though it's still Radar R, it's, a bit, it's not as dark as the other ones. But, but, and at the same time, I, you know, for me, when I think of something like this, it's all about making it as different as I can for what's been in the past, right? If you're looking for the dark, bleak, uh, Nordic noir, go watch the other movies, right? They're still there. This is something completely different, and that's what I really hope to give the audience, right? So something that I go, oh, I never thought it was going to be that, right? And, um, so, and I think that, that's something I enjoy to do. I never, I, I never like the audience to watch a trailer of mine and go, like, I know exactly what that is. I always, always want them to go and go, whoa, I never thought it was going to be that. Um, the movie is definitely fast moving. It propels at a very, you know, it's fast. Um, talk a little bit about the challenge of having those character moments and you want to explore stuff, but the modern audience now, so many people need it. They yeah. want it to be, you know, propelling. Yeah, well, yeah, that's a big challenge. I mean, it, it, it's huge and it's, and it's complex and it changes every day. And that's why Hollywood is such a tricky business in a way. Like no one really has knows, oh, this is how you make a hit. This is how you reach a big audience because the audience is constantly changing, right? What they wanted last year is not what they want this year. It's not and what they want now. It's not what they're going to want next year. So, uh, so it's really one of the things that how much character you give them, how much plot you give them, it's, it's a fine line. And you, know, you never really know. And if, with, with something like this, it was interesting because obviously the, the audience it's impossible to take out of their minds the previous experience they had with the character. So if they, so probably they expect a lot more of that, very long scenes of character and, um, uh, explore exploration. And uh, and here you have you have a plot that is pushing. So that's why I said it, this is more James Bond than Agatha Christie, right? If you compare with the previous stories. Uh, I'm always obsessed with the editing, with how a movie comes together in the editing room because that's yeah. the final rewrite. Uh, how long was your first cut compared to the finished film? No, it was just seven minutes longer, I think. Oh, so not, not anything crazy? No, no. I, te I tend to design them because, because I write them. I tend to have a clear idea of a design of what it's going to be. And the, and the way I build my movies, it's not easy to swap scenes around or, you know, well, let's take this thing out and that's it. And usually they build in a way that there's, there's no hundred ways to tell that story. It it's just works in a certain it has certain linearity. Like Don't Breed was one of the things. You couldn't take one piece out, it would fall apart, right? It would make no sense. So it's a kind of similar thing here. Uh, what, I'm assuming you did some test screenings. Yeah. Uh, what did you learn from those test screenings uh, that maybe impacted the finished film? Uh, it's interesting with test screenings. Like, I, I, I never had a bad test screening with my movies. Like, uh, I, I kind of make them for the audience. Like, really, I'm a crowd pleaser. I try to be. I try to give the audience what they really want. Um, from the design, from the original design of the movie, from the script. So usually when we go and test it, it's always a fun screening. So, so you're not in that place where you're like, that doesn't work, you're trying to fix it to, to see how, how, can be, how can it be better. But something I, I did learn that was interesting, um, that is really that this concept that the more information you put, the more details you give the audience to understand what's going on, the slower the film feels. The, with the, the, the length never changed, but it felt for some people, well, the more we explain this sort of thing, it felt like it kind of slowed down in, in this part because I, I try to make the movies a bit cryptic in a way, to not give them enough, to say enough about what's going on, but 
I like to see you whisper to whoever's sitting next to you saying like, I think that guy is with that other guy. Sure. And then goes like, no, 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 he wasn't, he wasn't. No, oh, no, you were right, he wasn't. Um, that sort of thing is, is something that keep, keeps you engaged with the film. It, it makes you participate, it makes you think harder about what's going on, it makes you squint at the screen and figure out like, wait, what, what? Oh, okay, I got it. That when stories are too literal and tell you everything, then you go like, well, it's obvious, anybody can tell. Uh, on that note, I will say, nice to see you again, sir. Um, hope it's a huge hit. Thank you, thank cool. you so much, man.